Hello, I'm Wanda, and today on Crazy Days, we're going to be trying to harvest some horseradish. Now, a couple of years ago, Patty Alderman from Alderman Farms, she and Tommy visited, and they brought me some horseradish, because I had been looking for some. So I've been growing horseradish, and I know this bed looks a little crazy, but we're fixing to down this bed and leave only our fig tree and our persimmon tree in the middle of it, and we're going to take the bed down. But at the time, we put these logs here because that would hold the dirt in, and uh, we were going to plant in here, but it's so shaded here that it did not grow. The horseradish has done pretty good. She get, brought me a piece, and I divided it into four pieces, and I believe three of them lived and produced. I want to dig it up. So I went to reading on horseradish when the right time is to dig it up, and it's like in October, anywhere from October to January, February. Uh, it's a couple of weeks till October, but I have time this morning. It's not too hot, and I've got other things to do over the next few months. So I'm going to dig mine up and see what kind of results we have with it. The purpose of leaving it till October or after a frost or so is that it makes it more pungent. It's more hot. Horseradish is a hot um, root crop. Um, it's in the, Most people use it in condiments. Um, the name horseradish. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, in German, it is M E E R R E some or one R with R E something, and it's kind of like a mere radish, reddish or something, reddick or something like that. And it's M E E R. And they said over the years they thought that kind of got changed into mare, M A R E, and probably somewhere along the line, some lady heard another lady call it mare radish and she associated horse with it which became horseradish kind of a weird story but okay um i'm going to dig mine up i'm going to show you what it looks like see if we have any roots anything like that you use the root in medicinal purposes and things like that it's good for the urinary tract heart uh even in weight loss products um right now I like it in what they call fire cider. That's my purpose in growing it is to have it for fire cider. I've had a couple of people bring me some fire cider. Uh, I think Brenda from Brenda's Basics and I believe Leo Baltz. I've used both. When I got a little sick, that's my go-to. I've not made my own fire cider yet because I've not dug my horseradish. So those two have kept me in my medicinal fire cider I guess you would call it but the main one of the main ingredients in fire cider is horseradish because of the hotness of it and um, I'm gonna dig this up and see if deep south has grown any horseradish not much for one little plant but it's already trying to come out in places so i'm going to replant some okay one good piece and i know i probably left some here because it looks like it broke off on the side so if more comes up I'm good, but we're going to take this and replant for the greenhouse and some to use. Okay, guys, I just dug up some of my um, horseradish, and I'm curious to see what the ginger's doing. And so, chamber bitters. I'm going to dig up this little section right here at the beginning of it and see what it's looking like and we've mulched this ground really really well look isn't that awesome beautiful piece of ginger and this is the edible kind and it's got little bitty things on it where it was fixing to come out again um smells like ginger it smells awesome this piece I'm probably going to root in the greenhouse in order to have a little bit 
I always try to do greenhouse stuff as much as possible. But that is awesome. So we're going to make some ginger tea. I've got one that's almost out of the bed here. And I like to keep it in the bed. This is a good It's got a good little foot and stuff started on it there. And if you leave a piece of the ginger in the ground, it's going to keep going. Um uh, One little foot there. Look at this. Isn't that awesome? So I've got horseradish. I've got several pieces of ginger. And I see all kinds of ginger feet in here. Look, I could just go all day, guys. Somebody needs some ginger. You're going to have to let me know because I have a supply here. And I don't mind sharing. But this ginger was sent from Jen at the Nut House and it has grown fabulously. And I'm going to leave some in the ground here. And I'm not digging it all up today. You see I got like four feet right now. Or I don't know if they're called feet, but that's what I'm calling them. Uh, that's more ginger than I would need probably for a long, long time. But I have been dehydrating ginger, so we will probably use some of that in teas and dehydrate some. And I have plenty to go for a long, long time. Ginger's used in all kinds of herbal co concoctions and stuff. I mean, it's good for the stomach. Ginger's just the perfect thing to have on your homestead. Okay, guys, we are at the turmeric. And again, there's my ginger. We're starting at the beginning of the turmeric. We're gonna just see what's going on with the turmeric too. I'm just kind of in a digging mood today. Curious to see what's going on with my herbs. Herbs are something you can plant. Just keep them weeded. Okay, this is a little one that could go in the greenhouse, but you can see the color and it's pretty awesome. All right, we're going to dig this whole clump up here. And again, turmeric, if I leave some in the ground, it's warm enough here during the winter that it will come back out in the springtime. Oh, this is a good one. And to get the full look of everything, I would have to go wash it. But do you see what I've got going on here? All these little turmeric nodules here. That's what most people get and plant. Ooh. And I can always plant these in the greenhouse. They're not being thrown away. But I've got dirt here. Okay. You leave one of those in the ground, it's going to root. Pretty awesome. So, and I can feel the other plants. There's lots of little nodules in there. Lots and lots. And again, I have it galore. I have plenty. So, if you're interested in turmeric, you're going to have to let me know. I'm going to try and put some up on the Etsy store. And, um, uh, Maybe sell a few. Not many, but I will have a few gingers and turmeric. The horseradish is all mine. Ain't going nowhere. Okay, guys, it's hot outside, but I came into the light where I could show you a little bit up close. I'll take pictures, but turmeric. Not ginger, turmeric. It's kind of a reddish color to it. That's what turmeric looks like. ginger kind of a whitish color yellow skin inside see the difference once it's washed 
you'll definitely notice a difference. This one looks like a little foot with, faint, or with toes off of it. This one has more pointed fingers like toes, fingers, pretty much a little different, colors different. Um, horseradish. Horseradish. It's going to be longer, white looking, kind of woodsy. The inside part, you this can be eaten. Uh, they said you can eat it raw, you can eat it in salads, uh, stuff like that, or you can cook it. It's a little pungent and a little tangy, but if you like that, it can be eaten. Uh, but the root is what you use, and it's the inside of the root. So that is horseradish. So I thought I'd take you guys along to show you a little of my digging things. And I know there's always noise in the background. When I start something, Danny's either on the tractor or on the lawnmower, sawing something up with like a tree or blowing off the leaves off the deck, always doing something. Sorry about the noise. But this is my little harvest for today. If you're interested, check out our Etsy store at deepsouthhomestead.etsy.com. I'm going to try and get some of the... I'm going to try and get some of the ginger and the turmeric up and if you're interested we might have a few of those for people that would like to buy like a little piece and you can break the little nodules off and plant them or you can plant the whole piece. Um, I took the horseradish and cut it into pieces and had three, not a whole lot out of all three but some out of all three. I'm going to replant it where it gets more sun and see if that helps with the horseradish. It's the main ingredient that I like in my fire cider. And um, ginger's another one. Ginger and turmeric are in the fire cider. Um, fire cider is something that you can add whatever. Garlic, onions, apple cider vinegar. It is a variety of different uh, herbs added together for what you need. You can add cayenne. Um, if you have stomach issues, you can add whatever you need. If you have heart issues, you add something for that. Or you can just make it plain. I'll try and think and put a link to a fire cider video or a fire cider recipe, something in the description below because there are many good ways to make fire cider. And that's a go-to for people in the fall and winter when people are getting sick, the kids are in school, they need something. That's one of my thoughts is make your fire cider and you need to make it ahead of time because when you need it is not the time to make fire cider. You need to make fire cider two, I think a month to two months in advance. It's gotta just kinda sit and chill for a while. So be making your fire cider now. If you have the ingredients, one reason I didn't make it, horseradish, $10 for one little root in the store. And I said, I'm not doing it. So Patty brought me this, thank you Patty Alderman. For the horseradish, at least I've got a start, and we're going to continue growing all these herbs here at Deep South Homestead. So, thank you guys from Crazy Days.